a type of saturated fat concentrated in meat and dairy seems to cause cancer to metastasize. Check out the video to find out more. Metastasis formation is the leading cause of death in cancer patients. That's how most people die of cancer. It's not the primary tumor, but the cancer spreading through the body. It's estimated that metastasis is responsible for 90% of cancer deaths, with little progress made in stopping the spread, despite our modern medical armamentarium. In fact, we can sometimes make it worse. Therapy-induced metastasis. All the typical cancer treatments, radiation, chemotherapy, surgery, even just poking the tumors with fine needle biopsies, have the potential to contribute to the problem. I mean, you can imagine how cutting around a tumor, severing the blood vessels, might lead to the migration of residual tumor cells. But why chemotherapy? How might chemo exacerbate metastases? Despite reducing the size of primary tumors, chemotherapy can change the surrounding tissues, resulting in an increased escape of cancer cells into the bloodstream. Sometimes uh, chemosurgery radiation are entirely justified, but sometimes these treatments can make things worse. If only we had a way to treat the cause of the cancer spreading. The development of anti-metastatic therapies has been hampered by the fact that we haven't been able to identify the cells that initiate metastasis, but then this landmark study was published. Researchers found a subpopulation of human cancer cells unique in their ability to initiate metastasis, all expressing high levels of a fat receptor known as CD36, dubbed the fat controller. It turns out palmitic acid, or a high-fat diet, specifically boosts the metastatic potential of these cancer cells. Where do you find palmitic acid? Although originally discovered in palm oil, it's most concentrated in meat and dairy. Emerging evidence shows that palmitic acid serves as a signaling molecule regulating the progression and development of many diseases at the molecular level, and that's the saturated fat that is recognized by the CD36 receptor on the cancer cells. And we know that's to blame, because if you block the CD36 receptor, you block the metastases. Uh, now, this was for a human cancer. However, it was a human cancer implanted into mice. But clinically, meaning in cancer patients, the presence of these CD36-studded metastasis-initiating cells does indeed correlate with a poor prognosis. For example, CD36 appears to drive the progression of brain tumors. If you look at the survival curves, those with tumors with less CD36 expression lived significantly longer. The same with breast cancer mortality. No surprise, since CD36 appears to play a critical role in the proliferation, migration, and growth of breast cancer cells. Inhibit CD36, and you can inhibit the migration and invasion of breast cancer cells. Cancer cell migration and invasion before and after CD36 inhibition. And not just in human melanoma and breast cancer-derived tumors. Now we suspect that CD36 drives ovarian cancer progression and metastasis too, since we can inhibit ovarian cancer cell invasion and migration and block both lymph node and blood-borne metastases by blocking CD36. We see the same kind of effect with prostate cancer. Suppress the uptake of fat by prostate cancer cells, and you can suppress the tumor. This was all studied with like receptor-blocking drugs and antibodies in a laboratory setting, though. If these metastasis-initiating cancer cells particularly rely on dietary fat to promote the spread of cancer, why not just block the dietary fat in the first place? Cancer cells love fat and cholesterol. The reason why fat metabolism may fuel cancer spread is because there's so much energy stored in fat, hence metastatic cells might take advantage of this feature to obtain the high amount of energy that is likely to be required for them to anchor and set up shop throughout the body. The time when sugar was considered as a major, if not only, fuel to support cancer cell proliferation is over. 
there appears to be a fatter way to metastasize. No wonder high-fat diets may play a crucial role in increasing the risk of different cancer types, including several advanced cancers. OK, if dietary fat may be greasing the wheels of the cancer machine, might there be specific dietary regimens we could use to starve cancers of dietary fat? You don't know until you put it to the test, which we'll cover next. Metastasis is the leading cause of cancer-related death. Cancer kills because cancer spreads. For example, the five-year survival rate for women with localized breast cancer is nearly 99%, but that drops to just 27% in those with metastasized cancer. Yet our ability to effectively treat metastatic disease has not changed significantly in the past few decades. You know things are getting desperate when there are papers like this, targeting metastasis with snake toxins. Now, we do have built-in defenses, natural killer cells that roam the body, killing off budding tumors. And I have videos on boosting natural killer cell activity, but as I explained in the last video, there's a fat receptor called CD36 that appears to be essential for cancer cells to spread. And these cancer cells respond to dietary fat intake, but not all fat. CD36 is upregulated by palmitic acid, as much as a 50-fold increase within 12 hours. Palmitic acid is a saturated fat found in junk food made from palm oil, but it's most concentrated in meat and dairy. Uh, this may explain why if you look at dietary fat and breast cancer mortality, there was no difference in risk of breast cancer-specific death for women in the highest versus lowest category of total fat intake. But you're about 50% more likely to die of breast cancer if you eat a lot of saturated fat. The systematic review and meta-analysis conclude that saturated fat intake negatively impacts upon breast cancer survival. This may explain why intake of high-fat dairy, but not low-fat dairy, was related to a higher risk of mortality after a breast cancer diagnosis. If it was the dairy protein, like casein, that was a problem, the skim milk might be even worse. But no, it was the saturated butterfat, maybe because it triggered the CD36-induced cancer-spreading mechanism. Women who consumed one or more servings per day of high-fat dairy had about a 50% higher risk of dying from breast cancer. We see the same thing with dairy intake in relation to prostate cancer survival. Drinking high-fat milk appeared to increase the risk of dying from prostate cancer by as much as 600% in patients with localized prostate cancer. But low-fat milk was not associated with such an increase in risk, so it seems to be the animal fat rather than the animal protein. And this is consistent with what Harvard researchers found in the United States. More evidence that the fat receptor CD36 is involved is that the risk of colorectal cancer from meat consumption increased from just doubling risk to octupling risk, multiplying the odds of getting cancer eightfold for those who carry a specific type of CD36 gene. So, is it time to give breast cancer patients, for example, a prescription for a low-fat diet? A cancer diagnosis is a teachable moment, if there ever was one, to motivate people to make changes to their lifestyle. But provision of evidence-based guidelines is essential, and you don't know until you put it to the test. A randomized, prospective, multi-center clinical trial to test the effect of a dietary intervention designed to reduce fat intake in women with resected early-stage breast cancer, meaning the women had their breast cancer surgically removed and were praying it doesn't come back. The dietary intervention group dropped their fat intake from about 30% of calories down to 20% of calories, dropped saturated fat intake about 40%, and maintain that 40% lower intake after one year, three years, five years. And after approximately five years of follow-up, the women in the dietary intervention group had a 24% lower risk of relapse, a 24% lower risk of the cancer coming back. 
That was the WINS study, the Women's Intervention Nutrition Study. Then there was the Women's Health Initiative Study, where again women were randomized to drop their fat intake down to about 20% of calories. And again, those in the dietary intervention group experienced increased breast cancer survival, meaning a dietary change may be able to influence breast cancer outcomes. And not only was breast cancer survival significantly greater, the women also experienced a reduction in heart disease and a reduction in diabetes as a little side bonus. Thank you.